Thorns of Love and the Flash Wolves to decide who will be the champion here. I have some good news and some bad news. First off, the good news, we are going to get into the drafts fairly soon, but because there is an issue with the audio on the headsets of the coaches, we are going to do this with the front of house uh, audio off only for the pick and ban phase. You guys might be happy you don't have to listen to us for this one, but the audio will be turned on as soon as we get into game. And also, if you've been trying to lip read and learn that, that will also maybe help. You can tweet what you think was picked. <laughs> well, you'll see it, of course. I'm just trying to make light of the situation, of course. Uh, we are sorry for this inconvenience, but it is the fastest way that we can get into picks and bands. So let's do that. And you won't hear us anymore from now on. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, no, it's like in a second. <laughs> well, we're just waiting. And no, no, now we're we finally go. into the picks and bands. All right. Yes, there Did we go. Turn so the stream off, yeah? can, the oh, stream okay. can can hear us, but the people uh, in front of the house not anymore. So it's a little bit more intimate as the unicorns of love mm. decide to ban out Aurelian Stoll as a first ban, we've seen it a couple of times. And then barge from the side of the Flash Wolves. Okay, there we go. Love me in the okay. draft. Oh, Aurelia I'm sorry. being <laughs> the first ban. Obviously, you don't want to have the Flash Wolves have this again on the purple side. And the time cancel. Everything is really standard all around. Mm -hmm. And the rise being taken. So all the priority picks are going off. And they want to play. Look at right this. Away. Yeah, I love the Bard ban, like you said. Just that priority Poppy pick away already. from Hillsong. They're just going straight in for the Poppy, though. But I love it, because so. then even if he chooses to go towards that Maokai again, don't not saying that it will happen. You could just punt him right out of the team fight. Yeah, definitely. And here, uh, Maple has been very successful on that Orianna, and he knows that Exile is very versed on it as well. So picking it away, what do you make of that? Already showing that hand. Well, it's a great pick. We've seen how successful he can be on it, especially in the sense of just laning really well. Because once you get a couple of items, you get that first spike and blue buff. She becomes so incredibly oppressive and hard to deal with. The ability to just bring the ball back and shield yourself makes the trading so obnoxious. But <laughs> the unicorns of love just most likely gonna go with the Cassiopeia instead and <laughs> all right well they have to listen to the team you gotta do the team of hover so they don't know what we're talking about but Aww. rex I makes a whole lot of sense to gank oriana one of the most versatile yeah. that logic is amazing they want a great best game and then when there's a troll pick they just go yeah and then they get sad when it doesn't get locked in but i think we will be yeah. happy here this is actually Let's a very good dynamic yeah. there we go Cassio, yeah. the wiser choice. Cassio right. Rex, I mean, especially on the blue side, you can do a nice little route and hand off the blue buff around four minutes in if you route back to the top side and hopefully utilize that window to really affect the Orianna lane. I feel like all the attention has to go towards mid lane this time around, and I don't want to see the flash flashlights go towards Nidalee, though. I agree. I would rather see Carson stick towards that Lee Sin, especially because we saw so much success on it. But again, we have to talk about it. Jace is left open. Yep. I know it doesn't necessarily fit in MMD's wheelhouse. The fact that Unicorns of Love were so confident that it probably probably wouldn't come out to take the poppy in yeah, case and not something, pitching the pool. Exactly. Ooh. Something like the Echo or the Maokai would come out. Uh, you know, if MMD wants to show up in game number five and take that power pick available, or Kennen, which Vizichachi has been able to do a lot in the earlier moments in the series as well, hovering that. The Olaf seems to be something that Karsa is uh, hovering towards instead of the Nidalee. It's pretty deadly doing Kennen with Olaf and Orianna just because he can run in and he has an AoE of stun yeah. around him on top of the Orianna ball, which just makes it that much tougher of, of a threat, especially because Olaf is a really good matchup into Rex, the ability to not be burrowed, to not be knocked up by the burrow, I mean, and then not only chase really well with the Axis, but deal that true damage to the hefty HP bars of the void. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still a little concerned as to how this cannon is going to go. You know, for MMD up in that top lane, Vizichachi is going to be very, very well versed. On, very well versed on that pop. Come on, guys, we can so do this. It's going to be, more uh, it's going to be a bit of a tough matchup. The Cassiopeia, yeah. uh, though, with the Oriana, it's really, I think that's really just going to come down to the skill matchup between uh, Maple and Exile at that point. But like I said earlier, uh, before we got into the draft, I'm really happy that Move has gone back to this right side. Oh, I think that he can be impactful. Whoa, blast from the past. Uh, okay. Literally the lowest win rate of any champion on 6.21 Logic was Callista. Like that's don't like the stats okay. don't matter. Stats don't matter to them. The Callista, so the Callista is actually good only against the Olaf here because she can kite him very well, has a lot of life, see a lot of DPS at the Bork. But the other thing that's really cool about a Cassiopeia Callista composition is their Baron Shred or their monster objective or epic monster control. Yeah. The rate of which they can shred through through that, astronomical. And the Alistar and there as well. You hmm. can't milk those because he gets on top of Callista and immediately cancels their ability to jump. And that's going to be so incredibly obnoxious because Callista really relies on the movement seat to hop around. And if she ever gets hit by any of the heavy CC on the lineup of the Flash Wolves, she's going to 
disintegrate. A big issue with Callista was really kind of her build path and what she was going to itemize towards. So I'm really curious if he's going to stick towards a Bork or start to expand out. Yeah, we've got the composition. And just as a note for Sifa, that it is Callista, not Kindra, just so you know. And we're going to see what happens. Take us into game five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find a way to destroy you emotionally next time we're on the desk together. I'm going to end you. You can't meme me like this in our final game. Hopefully the house will be able to hear us shortly as we have now finished up picks and bans. The players are moving into their seats. Come on, Zyrene. Compose yourself. <laughs> I'm, I didn't need that. I didn't need to start this <laughs> tilted. She's looking at me and laughing. Okay. Callista. Uh, it's an old meme, but it checks out. It worked out pretty well. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Game Vintage five, meme. however, as we focus back in, the stakes are raised for the unicorns of love. Flash Wolves, they've won a lot of tournaments. They love to take a shot at the IAM World Championship in Katowice, but I, our Unicorns Love, they are the career five-game team. They make it to five games, and each and every time they fall flat. It's exactly. Cruel Monica, right? That's the thing, is that just as recently as being one game away from Worlds, they find themselves one game away from their first career tournament. Yep, and the fact that it would be IEM Katowice, it would be a fantastic experience for them, a team that keeps ending up fourth, Fifth, sixth, you know, Unicorns of Love, they make the playoffs. They never win. They've made the finals one time. Getting international experience gives you a big boost and gives you even a better chance at winning the season, at getting that experience in playing against other teams, adopting their strategies if they're really good and getting a lot of scrims in. I am Katowice would be fantastic for the Unicorns of Love and the Flash Wolves to be able to attend. Have to wonder who's going to come out on top. A lot of comfort picks coming in. The big question mark, of course, going to be the Callista in the hands of Veritas. That unicorn looks a bit full on. It's thinking. I'm it's pensive. <laughs> so, did, did I draft the right thing? Did you run out of things to analyze? We're <laughs> no, no, on to, I, run just, to the I like to analyze has. what's on the screen. Yeah. It looks oh, like a silicon. We call that play-by-play. Uh, -play. <laughs> do you? Is that what you call what you do? <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we are about to get in the game. Ever closer, picks and bans confirmed now. The Alistair, an interesting pick from Sword Art, of course, a very powerhouse pick overall, will allow them, if they want to, to harken back to the earlier days of Flash Wolf style, where Sword Art goes for those early aggressive mid games. I mean, early days, vintage picks like the Rex, and now the Callista really are harkening to a meta maybe a year past, where Fussy Callista's in a lot of nerfs, even indirectly with itemization. Play the Ruin King might be buffed up in the future, but that was always the staple purchase. Which is why I think it was Crumbs was, you know, kind of wondering, where will we see the build path go? We've seen, I believe, Bloodthirster Hurricane. That was the first build that Sneaky did back when he piloted the Callista and really innovated that champion a long time ago. There's a lot to kind of consider here. It is Callista Thresh, which is traditionally that lane where post Callista hitting six, very hard to pin one person down because whoever walks back has the ability to save his teammate. Exactly. And a big thing about this Thresh, though, is you can save the Callista, Callista can save you, but also, Thresh has the ability to use the Callista W passive yes. and actually get it off very early on and keep using it constantly. And then, you know, you don't have to bring somebody who's range. You bring somebody who's a little bit more tankier and still get that damage off. Well, of course, should get into game soon. We have one Unicorns of Love fan who's particularly passionate about this win. You might be able to guess who it is. Maybe not. I wonder if he'll put LMS an EU on his yeah, chest. Yeah, is there an LMS? <laughs> EU greater than LMS? It's game it five. Happens. The game about to get underway. <laughs> Thank you, Remain, for the extra entertainment for the audience here. But yeah, we're about to get back in. It just got unpaused, so right. there we go. It's time. It's a best of one for all the marbles, Sifa. We're busting it out. Unicorns of Love on the blue side. Flash Wolves on the red. One final shot to earn the prize pool, to earn the trophy, to earn a chance to earn the title of IEM World Champion. A lot of earn there, all right? I was a little... <laughs> and you didn't even include that seed at IEM Katowice. That's what he's yeah. saying, a chance at that title, a chance at being the IEM World Champion. <laughs> Earning things, left and right, of course. But only a chance. <laughs> Thank you, Cyrene. Yeah, but guess what? <laughs> There's no chance of level one completely being botched, because <laughs> no, everybody's just fading hey, out. Hey, hey, wait till the champions hit everybody's two before passing out. judgment. <laughs> Focus. Focus, gentlemen. <laughs> of course, very passive in the early game thus far. We have to keep our attention focused on the bottom lane. We've seen just about every other matchup in this series so far, but Callista, not a champion we've seen for the entirety of this tournament. I don't... Um, did we see it at Worlds at all? Yeah, I, uh, no, no, no. I think we may have seen it one time, and that was really, like, 
uh, off kill. It was really kind of off, but still, against an Ash, it's a little strange because the way that Callista is coded is your attack speed is basically, it's the attack speed, but also your jump distance is based on the level of your boot, so you go further based on what boot purchase rank you have, but then the speed at which you cover that distance is based on how much movement speed you have and then your wind-up time is your attack speed. So Ash actually slows you, so you spend more time actually leaping, which means that if you're slow enough, you actually get less auto attacks in, because then you don't complete your actual jump fast enough, you don't get another auto attack, so Ash is actually a very good champion to play into Kalista, and that's what's surprising, because they already saw it come out. You've been waiting a few months to put out that nugget. Very well spoken, though. The other thing that I think I noticed here is that Hillisang loves to pack up and leave lane, and now so much of the potential damage, attack speed in particular, is mm. gated in the pack massive between Veritas and Hillisang that you lose so much of the ability. You effectively can't take any semblance of even trades as a Callista unless your Thresh is right next to you. And of course, we think back to that change that forced Callista to stay with her Oversworn at every stage of the game to be efficient. And that's really when she fell out of the meta. However, Hillisang, Veritas, you know, a lot of this has come down to some of the early laning plays. So maybe just focusing there, maybe content to keep this lane phase going. And Meanwhile, the rest of the lane stays relatively even. Visichachi seems comfortable on the top side. Yeah, and this bottom side, because they were able to start a camp, get a lot of the spears into the romp and all, or the krugs and all that, they're able to actually get a level advantage. So Veritas being able to zone out double red very early on and have that early level two. But it has been actually pushed back a little bit here. Hillisang going to hit two a little bit later on. Exile and Maple, even so far, of course, you talked about the Orianna being a potential counter pick to the Cassio in the early stage, and I'm wondering what we need to look for here. Yeah, the way that I see it is that Flash Wolf actually got winning lanes across the board in the early game. Later on, it's just you have to watch for how the team fights play out. How is Maple going to actually zone out Exile? And if Exile can get into these team fights, there are a lot of squishy targets on Flash Wolves, but there is an Alistar. The Alistar has ways to punish the Cassiopeia, who plays in the mid range. I echo your thoughts there. Picking for composition, sure, with the Cassiopeia, but the main story there is, as you saw it out, is still a very tanky, is that. The Cassiopeia is such short to medium range that the ability to punish once you get points to both Q and W as Orianna means that almost every single non-all-in trade is won by Orianna, you know, barring out of just taking a lot of damage from those Twin Fangs. So it can be very difficult for Exile to actually stand up to this Orianna after a few levels. Worth knowing that, of course, Orianna base damages on the Q and W very low in the early game. Yeah, a lot of their damage is in that clockwork wind-up, so people will take things like E first and try to auto-attack trade with the shield. But right now, it's all about Exile shoving out, goes back for the early tier timing, back for a pink ward as well, and up a little bit in CS. Happy to have the early tier move and Karsa spotting each other out, so not going to see any immense amount of aggression between these two. Much more worried about showing up to their lanes than fighting each other. Chachi. Going really low on the top side of the map, but will be safe. Meanwhile, the bottom lane, pressure initially in favor of the Unicorns of Love, however, has started to balance out as Alistair has a few more levels under his belt. Not too much to report here in the early game. That's not surprising, really. Remember, this is the single game to decide the champion. See a lot of comfort from Unicorns of Love. I, I mean, returning to the Rek'Sai makes perfect sense. The two wins in this series was on the comfort pick of the Rek'Sai. And Given how much is at stake, expect things to be pretty passive. If there's any game breaking, that will be probably a big snowball, because in general, everyone's going to be on the back foot, whereas at the start of a best of five, you try things and try and get an early advantage. No such mindset by now. Easy to expect passive play, of course, as you said, when the pressure is on. And interesting to see as we move forward into the game, what's going to be the next step? Veritas, of course, uh, Callista, once again, not a pick we see a whole ton of itemization, a big question mark, but Exile, maybe overstaying his welcome mana. mana. He's, he should have flashed a while ago oh, if he was going to. He's got to wait Karsa for the Rek'Sai. Here comes Rek'Sai. Waiting, Rek'Sai on the way in. Can they turn this one around? Karsa, has he been the one who's going to get turned on? Luke going to back off. Exile only putting the Ghost there in the end. Yeah, yeah, able to call move over right in the vicinity, so it was perfect for him. But now his back timer a little bit off, but he forced Maple back earlier. Moving forward, Chachi does a decent amount of damage. Chachi Picks up the buckler in a good spot to start this trade. Could this be the first Q? one for the Unicorns of Love? Q flash. 
Backs off in the end. Yeah, it was two auto attacks away from the kill. One thing I noticed once again, Costa short on his axe, even though it would have been able to pick it up. Damage output I don't think was a problem. It was more about hitting the CC. Would have naturally passed, would have picked it up. Went short on the axe, and that stopped there being a kill. Onto Exile, he didn't even have to use his flash. Exactly. The, one of the axes missed, and then the other one was easily dodgeable because Exile wasn't slowed. So gets away. And then on the top side, though, this is a big win for Vizicachi in the one-on-one -on -one, because he gets a better back timer. He gets to push this all the way in. Sort of getting aggressive though. Hill is saying now caught up, but he's not going to tank tower. Angry, but Karsa is here. Veritas, if they want to get a kill, they need to get it now. They're flashing forward. Veritas is going to grab one. Oh! Lancer now, but Maple is here to punish. He doesn't have the level six, but they could cut them down. Veritas not going to get anything. Does hop over the wall. Nice play. Karsa going to get in the end with the axe. What was a beautiful play to start from Unicorns of Love is completely trumped by the movement I mean, that from was Maple. An outrageous outplay. Ended up not mattering, but. Uh... Now I mean, you can see why they stick with the Clist Thresh, because clearly they're on the same page. <laughs> the style points matters a lot to me, so I'm, I thought that was really awesome. That was really well played, like you said, on the same page. A little bit of a level advantage as well for Veritas and CS. So now that he killed uh, the double red, <laughs> double red on the Ash, he doesn't pick up any more here. And that was an aggressive play for Flash Wolves. They started that one off, but it is an advantage for them after the two-on-one. I mean, you just have to watch. Just, again, we're going to focus on the outplay. They get first part, that's a small thing, but both players kind of presence of mind and knowledge of cooldowns. Super smooth, beautiful to watch, but ended up not actually being conclusive. Veritas' mechanics clearly are on point with this Callista, so any buffs come towards that Callista, we can see someone who's going to be <laughs> yeah. very happy. This is why she's in the gutter right now, right? <laughs> exactly, because... Uh, I mean, she is a very difficult champion to balance. She's in that Yasuo tier where sure. the A-tier people, the people who can play it at a very high level, is very difficult to actually play against. So should, we'll need some changes, though, in the future. We'll see. Move now coming down to the bottom side of the map. Maybe looking to rinse and repeat here, of course. Got a lot of summoner spells. Briefly turn our attention to the top lane, however, because Vizichachi using this EXP advantage to try to force a... F That's such a strong part of the Poppy's kit as well, is that the Grasp of the Undying the Buckler actually counts as a melee attack, so you get full value from it when you throw it at the enemy. You get more HP back, boom, and then you pick it up and trade again. And I think actually with all the changes to Grass, it's more about the damage actually that's coming out onto the Kenny. You know, that it was rebalanced, do a lot more damage rather than necessary healing. There's max health damage, so clearly Ken not going to be building much of that, but it's just basically a win, a one trade for the Poppy without committing whatsoever. And I agree, it gives so much more laning presence, especially compared to old Poppy, but in general, Poppy has evolved in so many different ways after the rework. Veritas and Hillisang taking complete control of the bottom side, however, Sword Art caught out. Veritas level six, not gonna follow up there. It's really big. Ooh, uh, ooh. Exile. Uh, He's trying to be cheeky there, but now, he got chunked out. This might actually be him sacrificing his blue, because move is over here, Karsa decides to invade, and he knows that the ultimate is down from the Cassiopeia, so he might risk it a little bit oh. here. Karsa walking back and forth, potential for him to gank top or look mid lane. Move now headed in, maybe potentially in trouble, flash to safety. Still got the flash though, so it's going to be worth it for move to take his time to gank that. It's really big that Vizichachi has won those early trades. We already saw a game where he won as the Poppy against Nara in kind of an unfavorable matchup and ran away with the game. But I'm not actually referring to that. I'm referring to the fact that he's actually got pressure in the lane against Kennen, and it wasn't Olaf rotating and Kennen having the inside track and just killing people. Is being a killing. Double red, Veritas, no flash. Forward exhaust has gone down. Veritas getting pulled back into the fight. Sword Art could be next. The Callista really unstoppable once she gets on top of that target. Veritas is bodying double red. CS is 80 to 51. They've already denied 29 from him. Absolutely disgusting how what he's doing in this bottom lane. And of course, double red a big question mark. And it was a similar story for Veritas for so much of the regular season in EU LCS. This guy was not a top tier AD carry. Was oh. not competing with Reckless or Forgiven. But now on an international stage when the pressure is on in game five, pulls out a pick that I would say is is poor on a power level compared to a lot of the meta picks in, uh, available. But brings it out, and is showing why he wants to use it. And then you look at the Alistair pick, and we saw obviously Marta bring this back out of world, surprise us in the world where we expected only there to be those ranged supports. There's kind of one trick for the Alistair in this lane. It's very, very punishing trades when you have the W passive and just the Ren coming out from Callista. So flash pole and the headbutting into turret, that was kind of the one trick. Ignite on cooldown, the flash on cooldown, not much the Alistair can do. Well, it's also an Ignite on an Alistar, right? He's going for the Thunder Cow type build there, but against the Callista, if you run Exhaust, you can stop all that Ren damage. You can actually really stunt him because they will try to stack up Spears, and if you get the Exhaust at the right time, you force them to either hold their E for a very long time or, hold on, 
Sword Art potentially in trouble. Goes back in, gets pulled back. Great use of the Callista ultimate. The spears are in. No yep. mana? No mana to come in. Doesn't pull out the spears in the end. Yeah, whether it was range, whether it was mana, they don't secure that kill, but the pressure they have gotten with the unfancied Callista pick is really impressive from Unicorns of Love, who managed to shake off that previous game. Not an easy feat to do. And look, really competitive in game five. Exactly, but we have seen the Flash Wolves, and here's the thing is why we keep talking about the Unicorns of Love is that the Flash Wolves, number one in the LMS. Right, Unicorns of Love, if they end up winning this, they've taken down the number one North American LCS team in TSM, and then they would have taken out the number one Flash Wolves LMS team. That is actually incredible for a team that hasn't been a f uh, number one team in the EU LCS. And look, of course there are other asterisks, we won't mince words, you know, they are yes. both with roster swaps, but what it says about Unicorns of Love going into 2017 with a settled roster, I think, has to be counted upon. Unicorns of Love, so close to Worlds, Spice, we've heard, some of their players may be rotating, a lot may be changing. It's good to see Unicorns of Love looking strong for Spring Split. Exactly, that's what their goal is, is 2017. They're looking at that. If they call, qualify for Katowice, then, or World Championship, then they're able to actually get some more experience under their belt. And that's what they want to do, is they want to be a competitive team, because they've always been thought of as that chaos style, and also the team that's in the middle of the pack in the EU LCS. So close to Worlds, so many times, playoffs every single time, but still haven't been able to go. I mean, to me, the most impressive thing is, you know, we talk about all the stills and uh, as if the Unicorns of Love are the same team, but they've iterated nope. on the lineup. Players have left seeking better opportunities, and you have to obviously put those in inverted commas, given how consistent Unicorns of Love have been. The fact that they've kept these results consistent when only Vizichachi and Hillasung are the players that are in common with that roster that was fielded two years ago at IM San Jose is really impressive on multiple fronts for the organization. This organization has consistently come close to the precipice of taking a title, and it would mean so much if IEM Oakland was the first in their trophy case. Oh, move spotted as he attempts the ocean, but you're absolutely right, Papa Smithy. They may want to stick around anyway. Karsa taking their time on this one. They're just going to have this donated over to them in the end. Sword Art potentially in trouble. Veritas ready for a fight. Moves over the wall. Not what he wanted Telephone to get, though. He is now set to fall. Olaf going to throw the axe. Does go wide. Sword Art looking for the engage. Cannon on the backside move, delaying him for the fight as long as he can. Now pulling back. Hillisank taking their time. Fates call up and available. Going to save it as long as possible. Not going to you already used. My apologies. Thought it had not been. It's also five in the bottom side. They're going to keep going in. The <laughs> going in. Instantly five kills now in the favor of Flash was a three kill advantage. Not quite the gold lead in their favors. Poppy will break the first tower, which is big. It'll end up getting them a lot of this gold back onto that Poppy, who now is a big split push threat against the Kennen. Can't be really dueled out there, but Maple absolutely monstering it out here in the mid lane. Sword Art on the way in, not going to be able to get it. Exile has to flash, but that's the, I think the third or fourth time that Exile has missed that petrifying gaze. Uh, the cool, you have to say the ultimates have kind of been the one area where Exile has struggled. Cannot question his poise, his ability to ri rise up to the level of his opponents. Maple certainly no slouch on the side of Flash Wars, one of the best mid laners in the world. But the ultimates, first Orianna, now Cassio, left a lot to be desired. Exactly, looking for a gank in the mid though, trying to punish Maple for being a little bit far up and a little aggressive, but still just going to get some wards down in his jungle. And the goal just about dead even, the first brick paying off for Unicorns of Love despite the difference in kills. Bottom lane still very far behind. Double red, one, two, three, the 79 farm to the 106. Chachi's doing well on the top side with the two kills for Cannon starting to balance it out. And overall, very much a close game here as we approach the 15 minute mark. A lot of potential fights here. Really Maple, the one who's pulling out on top in the mid lane though. To confirm, will be the Blade of the Ruin King for Veritas. There's certainly no new age build coming through. Probably shouldn't be surprised. Does synergize very well with that item. Taking down the tower as fast as possible. Move potentially caught out once again. A lot of punishment going down onto him. Gets pulled back. Tunnel not going to be enough. Flash already down from the earlier fight. Yeah, caught out, but there's a TP behind there. Whoa. Trying to punish. Here comes Chachi. Chachi. Maple exhausted. Veritas throwing down what he can. Gets pulled back as well. This perfect positioning coming in from the Unicorns of Love. Flash Wolves caught off guard. Karsa potentially in trouble. Out goes the Fates call. In goes the Thresh. And down goes Karsa. 
Might be able to get more. Ah, uh, moving forward, Sword Art. Knocked up under the tower. Does have the ultimate up and available. Visichachi doesn't care. He's going to move in. The Ignite goes down, however, and he's potentially in trouble. He's going to make it out. Exile battles to start the game, but comes in when it counts. Unicorns of Love say you can five man bot. We can do it too. Four people in the bot side move. Ends up ulting to the top to try and cover it. Yeah, because they forfeited so much in terms of leaving the top lane, they needed the objectives on top of the kills. They get that three kills and an outer tower bar at bottom. Uh, actually leads up to almost a 2,000 gold lead for Unicorns of Love. Exactly what they wanted. Flash Wolves thought they had the solid collapse. We'll look at it one more time as Move did, you know, start out by going down. Yep, That's they were standing still. They were completely baiting him in there. And as soon as Move, Move went for that scuttle crab and unburrowed, they know that he has to take that little extra second to go back down. There's a cooldown on that tunnel. That's a cooldown on the teleport. Remember, it was the teleport that led to the last kill and then the turret going down in the bot lane. This time it was Poppy, no answerable rotation available for MMD, and they certainly got the maximum from this situation for Unicorns. Absolutely what they wanted, and just beautiful positioning for Veritas, but another fight is broken out. Veritas Ooh. isn't gonna get knocked down. Another advantage going over to the Unicorns of Love, almost 2K gold in their back pocket. Give them the edge over the Flash Wolves. It's crazy, not that, done. it's crazy that the fast push is actually happening for the team that has the Callista, obviously not a lot of range, a lot of AOE wave clear, and the Poppy versus Cannon, they're actually well winning the turret race. They got the bot lane turret, Poppy had already sold up top. Now they're roaming around for kills and potentially assaulting the mid lane turret from Flash Wolves. We've seen team comps kind of used against themselves pretty frequently during this tournament, and this seems to be another game of that ilk. Looking forward, of course, still a very even game as we are about to get back in. Just another quick one. Flash Wolves, though, now barreling down the mid lane, ready to take a turret in response. And even the gold back up, at least for the most part. Flash Wolves not in a position to respond, although Chachi moving down, maybe looking for the flank here. Pulling back, Cannon Creep's getting cleared out. Maybe we'll just take this time to clear the lane. Ash trying to recoup some of the farm deficit as Veritas has been roaming across the map. But that is the 6-2-0 Callista. While she may be weaker, she's still a terrifying snowball champion if she does get ahead. Yeah, but if she does get ahead, you just have to worry really about the Cannon, possibly the Alistar, but you have the Poppy to stop the Alistar from getting in. If the Poppy just stands on top of the Callista and hits W, it's so hard to get to her, and this Olaf will get kited around. And there's Cassiopeia as the other carry on the team, and she is a damage hyper carry, so it's important that Callista still will fall off. You know, first two items feel great on Callista. Oh, Fantasy Exile caught don't. out. I don't think he's going to have any option to get out of there. He uses the Petrifying Gaze, but it's too little too late. Chachi tries to save him, but Maple's going to grab the kill. A really good play there as well. Sword Art, he's leaving the lane. He's trying to get more picks and trying to actually even up the gold here so Flash Wolves can still be in this game, and they very much are actually capitalizing on the flashes that have been down from Flash Wolves. He got the flash earlier from Exile. Revisits for the gank. Nice Side follow up overall, and MMD now going to take down a tower and put the gold once again in the favor of the Flash Wolves. Yeah, sort of exiting lane is so important from the laning phase. It was a disaster from a 2v2 standpoint for Ash and Alistair, but now with the ability to initiate from global range and the Alistair's roaming capability, this is the phase of the game where Flash Wolves need to start arresting the momentum. And honestly, they don't have to do too much, despite how big. Callista is. Remember, Callista has 100% of the kills on the side of Yukon's Love. Six out of six. And Flash Wolves, although it feels like they've been behind this game, even in gold and ahead in kills. And of course, we look at the tools available to shut that Callista down. Headbutt, Pulverize at a moment's notice. Combined with the Orianna, you have the ball delivery system ready at a moment. Right here, UOL setting up at the Drake. It is an infernal Drake. They think that somebody's going to check this eventually. There's no vision here. Oh. And there goes the Ash. Nice. Arkshot coming in. Good patience from Flash Wolves, not taking any risks here. Flash Wolves. That pink ward's still up and available. Sword Art has the ultimate. Can break any potential CC. Potentially going to deliver the ball into the team, though. Sword Art trying to find his way in there. Backing off now. Miasma going to deny the headbutt in. TP onto the backside. MMD is there. Veritas is in trouble. That's all their kills, but... It's call going to keep him alive. MMD trying to make it out. Petrifying Gaze going to hit Sword Art and Sword Art alone. Oh, waiting as long as possible. Moving forward, that's it. Exile, Veritas still alive. Karsta trying to bully him off. He does so much damage. Blade of the Room can keep him healthy. Lots of healthy carries. Flash Wolves edging out that fight, but so many low health bars. Flash Wolves don't look to be able to actually turn on the Infernal Drake. Everyone has to back off, lick their wounds. Close fight. Flash Wolves come out ahead. Gold dead even. Such a close fight overall. Veritas barely able to survive. Hillisang with the flay, keeping him alive, keeping the cannon away.
Yeah, and Maple there with a great shockwave as well, catching Exile out of position and making sure that they can pick him up here. And UOL looks like they're going to pick up this Drake. An aggressive decision, but this is the power of Callista. Has absolute control over these objectives, outsmiting easily if anyone tries to contest. Making all jugglers feel really obsolete. <laughs> This actually was too difficult to balance, so. <laughs> yeah. Situations maybe, like that. Maybe that should go. You know, so I could feel like a jungler again. I mean, they could give a lot of power budget, you'd have to think back in that situation, but. Yep. Regardless That's of that. Design hurricane. conversation. And then there's the two item power spike. Play the Ruin King Hurricane has always been the big window of power for team fighting Callista. Ability to range initiate with the ultimate, and then these two, two item spike. Gonna rely on Cassiopeia for damage late game, though doesn't get better from here for the Callista. Yeah, for the Callista, I will say, though, against double AP, usually going Maw into a Bloodthirster makes her so damn hard to kill. Sure. You have two to three sources of lifesteal, and they can't burst you down fast enough that you start recovering. Now, I really like that build here just because, as you say, brittle frontline. If they don't burst you and you life tank, life steal through it, not a lot of threat. Doesn't even matter if you don't have items like Last Whisper or any sort of Infinity Edge crit modifier because you will be able to take down the squishier members on the side of Flash Walls. So already has an all magic mountain in the inventory. I think you're smack on. It's probably going to be Hex Strings into more Malmordius next. Move spotted out and Poke going down onto him. Potential Callista builds that could offer the power Unicorns of Love need to close out here. NMD taking a little poke. Yeah, there is the possibility it's also a QSS, but hold on. Maple's down here too. Oh, Chachi. Oh, we Gonna got kick the Oriana out. Nice play overall, but there's a fight in the jungle. In the meantime, Sword Art has he been the one that's caught out. Veritas on the way, but the bottom side has to respect the Oriana. His Thresh not quite with him. Sword Art separating him from the team. Fates call up and available. Can he get in time? Yes, Veritas pulling him to safety. Oh, he goes oh, yeah. back over the wall. He wants Maple. The chain knockup. Chachi's not there to spawn, though. The AoE CC is too much. The damage coming in. Veritas is killing members left and right, but Sword Art gets Here's the combo Cassio. in. Cassio looking for the kill. Stubble Red's gonna drop. Exile is going massive the carries are left alive and unicorns of love monster through that fight it, it felt like that fight seesawed multiple times during it i thought xl was too late but still has that big early damage on the cassiopeia just with the single item morella nomicon cleaned it up and they also have the inside track to mid lane and we'll get a structure from it as well exactly because they had their two carries stay alive there it was a three for three it ended up being an even trade but you all get a little bit more back from that and that is big for Orm. Callista, Cassio up and available. Ping's going down under the Baron. This is a terrifying duo that could cut it down in an instant. The ward is there. Flash Wolves can contest, but the TPs are coming in. Unicorns of Love looking for the Baron. Not able to clear out the most forward vision and also the other vision there as well. Cassiopeia, Callista. You cannot ask for more Baron threat. Can't ask for no more pauses either. <laughs> Could you? The pause <laughs> giveth, and the you? pause taketh away. Such is life. <laughs> of course, going to take a chance to look at that last fight as we sort out the small issue here. We were, we're really complimenting Hillisung oh, and his yeah. play on Thresh in the previous time that we saw it. And then consider here that, of course, he's the one in control of what he does and goes in. You think, okay, Cassiopeia is actually nowhere near. This is going to be a disaster, but actually ends up working out for the Yukons of Love. Yeah, that was actually insane that he went back in there, but it ended up working out for him. His exhaust wasn't quite up just yet, so he ends up going down because of all the damage that ends up on him. And then, boom, ends up getting three for three. Really bold decision there from Hillisang, but of course, Sword Art, they get the combo, they think that they get what they want, but they're hitting the tankier members. The Callista left untouched, the Cassio coming in late to the fight. Didn't look like an ideal start, honestly, when Hillisang went in. I thought they set up for the perfect Oriana combo, but the strength is in the Callista and the Cassio as well. And the strength in the Callista, I was talking about it before, where that he does have the Null Magic Mantle, could be a QSS, but he also bought another one, so maybe he's even going for Why that not? on top of it, right? Why not both I, when you have eight kills at 22 minutes? The final build will probably be Mercurial Scimitar with a Bloodthirster, with a Mob Malmortis, so you're so hard to kill. You have four sources of lifesteal from your inventory when you end up getting the Mob Proc, so absolutely ridiculous to try and kill him. And actually super effective with the builds we see. It's actually a death cap on a second item on the cannon. Death cap expected on the Ariana. So just getting that extra 40, 45 magic resist early won't be trivial. It's very yeah, big. No. The big thing, though, is no Abyssal Scepter here to help the double AP composition. Sometimes Cannon will get that for the CDR and make sure that he has a really low one and can get constant Ws. Oriana, it's not always the pick that he'll go for, but you know that the cannon wants to get in the thick of the fight, so we may see that soon. 
both teams moving around the Baron, the 23 minute mark approaching later and later into the game. The gold dead even, dragons even, of course, an infernal to an ocean. And those small skirmishes, the ocean will heal the flash rolls back up. However, Baron remains the center of attention. Poppy clearing waves, Kennen going down to the bot lane to do the same thing. But both teams ready to moment's notice to threaten the Baron, and flash rolls have to be especially careful here. I think Unicorns of Love, actually, I would say need to more. Uh, worry just because remember they don't have teleport on poppy so there's more freedom for the cannon to make plays around the map sure they don't have the magic penetration but they still do a lot of damage with this double death cap being completed so visitarchy definitely needs to be around his team it's pushing out a wave back Your eyes on sword art they have a lot of ways to engage, and the Alistair over the wall is certainly one of them. It's a mod of special. How did the cow get there? Who knows, but Maple looks like he's going to get hit. Oh, trying to get soloed out of the wall. Will he even be able to use the shockwave? No, not. But can he turn back to get into this fight? Exile moving forward. Veritas unstoppable. The Olaf is not fast enough. The Ragnarok, not enough. Double Red going to get caught out. The shockwave going to save his life. Maple keeping his team healthy. Now comes the cannon. Now comes the Alistair. Not going to pull the trigger. They just killed the smite. This may be UOL going towards the Baron. They have the Callista. They'll do so much damage to it and have that big Ren on top of a smite. Callista, Cassiopeia, and double secure. This should be Baron for Unicorns of Love. But remember, Kennen has ultimate. Ash is alive oh, as well. Yeah. Maple gets hooked. Are they going to be able to get more? Maple played back. The box goes down. Exile is still up. MMD trying to take down everyone, but it's not enough. Exile's alive. Veritas is alive. Sword Art now set to fall. Simply not enough. Tries to buy time for double red, but Cassio. Callista alive and well. Baron now set to fall for the Unicorns. Question is, can they ignore the poke from Ash and take this? They don't need Smite. They have a Callista, and the, banish, the damage from Cassiopeia and Callista is insane on Baron. But Cassio still has ultimate. If you walk too far forward, ooh, almost. A lot of spears approaching the 2K mark. Callista should be able to take this soon. Going to get it. Ooh, actually quick. went over to a poison. So close <laughs> in the exchange, but that is a definitive lead for the Unicorns of Love. 3k in their favor. The Baron buff should let them break down these tier 2 towers. And how you said, have to respect the Flash Tools. Maybe a little less so now that they have the Baron buff backing them up. And look at a different meta. You're trained to think. Callista, Cassiopeia, Baron at 20. That's just the math equation that happens when both of them are taken. But they've been out of the meta so long. It went for the first time at 20, didn't find it, but assertive barons, even without smite, are possible when you have a super tank like Poppy that can just shrug off the baron damage. Exactly, and you want to keep going towards those barons. It's actually really clever by you as well, because you have that two item power spike, you know you're stronger than the Ash, start going towards that objective, pick it up, or at least get a fight where you are stronger, and now they get an infernal right afterwards. So Happy dice times. roll, yeah. double infernal. Dice roll moves in their favor once again. Double infernal, an excellent thing to have. Of course, Callista itemizing the raw AD. We'll be happy to have that. Cassio as well with a potential six items, gaining more than any other AP champion in that percentage boost. Have to be now careful. In. Chachi getting aggressive. They have to respect the combo. Shockwave up. That was saying moving forward. He looks for Maple. Oh, Maple. Can he get Maple locked down? The Shade CC. Cannon trying to turn it back. Exiles alive. The Callista is untouched. Unicorns of Love are here to win. And Flash Wolves are caught off guard. Hillisang makes the hero play. Veritas going in for the cleanup. Unicorns of Love, they're going to break the base. The death timers are super long already. 30 seconds. They're going to try and close it and win the tournament here. They have a gigantic minion wave. They may be your IEM Oakland champions. Death timers are long. We're far enough in the game. They may have enough time. Veritas cutting this one down. Karsa not going to be enough to hold it. Unicorns of Love, so many game fives, so many losses. But not today, Oakland. Unicorns of Love will be your IEM champions. We saw them all the way from the first round of this tournament show that they are here to play. Stuck with this roster for the tournament. Stuck with the roster for 2017. And their teamwork was levels above the other opponents here. It took five games, but to me, the strongest team that attended this tournament comes away with the victory. They take down the number one NALCS team. They take down the number one LMS team. The Unicorns of Love will claim their first trophy and the title of IEM Oakland champions. And you will see this team at the Intel Extreme Masters World 
championship. Won't well, take away decisive NA greater than EU, EU greater than NA from this tournament. There was a lot of rosters that are still coming together that will change over the course of the offseason. But what will never change is that on this day in 2016, finally that first tournament win goes over to the Unicorns of Love. And whatever else you want to say, there can be no doubt that the Unicorns have solidified their roster for the coming season. Played together exceptionally well, made bold calls, the two staples of the Unicorns of Love, Vizachachi and Hillisang, in one final moment, cut down the hopes of the Flash Rolls with a beautiful and confident engage. Absolutely beautiful. Like you said, it became comfort was the name of the game. The Rek'Sai out of the meta, the Callista out of the meta, the Thresh even considered out of the meta. Perfect play there from Unicorns of Love to close it out. And they are your champions! You just have to be happy for them. They fought so hard. They came so close to getting knocked out multiple times. They make it in the end. A well-earned victory. Some moments don't need too much commentary. transformation been like over these last three years? Mm, it, I don't know, like we, whenever we played with UAL, it felt like we are a good team, but we never accomplished anything. And we finally accomplished and we won and I'm so happy with my team and I think we are a really good team right now. Well, you certainly accomplished something today. We'd like to talk to the founder here, Shibi. It has been over three years, founding this team, August 2013. How, by the way, you look fantastic. <laughs> it has been an, an amazing run. Talk us through this, these over last three years and the transformation of, of what's happened. You guys have worked through the EU from the Challenger Series, and now you're taking home your first big trophy. Talk us through. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm so, so happy. I'm so proud of the guys. Everyone has been working so hard the last month. And I'm just so grateful as well to the team. Like, you guys have been doing so well. Like, I'm just, I'm really, really happy for the team. And yeah, bring it home. Oh. I'm so happy. Very good. Well, we're really happy for you guys. And congratulations on your big win. Back to you guys. It has been an amazing event. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Thank you so much to Unicorns of Love taking their first international title. The champions of the Intel Extreme Masters Oakland. Absolutely fantastic stuff that they've shown here today. Yeah, and also a huge congratulations to the crowd. I mean, it was a very long day, but yeah. you guys stuck it out. You were the sixth man for the Unicorns of Love. I heard the UOL chants going strong, got behind the team, and made sure that they had the spirit to close this out. And what dominant fashion. Yeah, definitely. And it all came down to the wire, and it didn't come down to one power pick or, or one thing insane. It came down to keeping it, did it? And the Callista really, right. really just came together. Callista and Thresh, such a powerful lane when they first came out. A little bit in there, it's not really that strong, but just the synergy that they had together completely demolished the Flash Wolves you, lane. You've got to ask, is this like a plan that they had in their mind? They know that they can play it. Of course, they played that combo before, but never to this extent or this good, and definitely not under this amount of pressure. And then they do this here. That is super impressive. I mean, we've been talking about it all day, Unicorns of Love, having things up their sleeve. This was the last thing that I really expected them to pull out. The Thresh Callista bot lane. It's you a classic. You expected Callista Thresh? No, the last the thing last that I thing. expected. Oh, okay. No, I am not that good of a prophet. That's your levels <laughs> of prophecy right there. I can't do that yet. Malachi is about as good as I can get. I have some growth uh, in that regard. But, I mean, what a insane best of five right there, going all the way to the fifth game and to end with the Callista Thresh duo, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. The exhaustion, the confidence, I mean, to take such a high mechanical skill cap combo like the Thresh, like the Callista, to execute it so beautifully, that initial dive, that was ridiculous. Even though yeah. they got picked up in the end, like cut the highlight reel right yeah. there, that was perfect. And they did it again and again. The yeah. team fight, some of the 